In this video, I'll be implementing a stack, but using an array as the underlying storage container. Later in the video, I'll show you some Java code, but the basic concepts I'll be using here apply in many programming languages. We'll name this stack variable stack. Now, when we initialize a stack, it is empty. We represent this in the array by making every single cell contain a null reference, which is represented visually with these slash marks. Now, conceptually, if we have an empty stack, we basically just have a line, and we will eventually put things on top of this to represent what we're stacking up, but this line represents the bottom of the stack. Note that although the stack is empty, the array is not. We have to choose an array capacity in advance and reserve that space in memory. In this example, I happen to have chosen a size of 10, meaning indices 0 through 9, but you can choose any arbitrary amount. In addition to the array, we will also track an integer variable named top index that indicates which index within this array the top of the stack currently is. Now, since the stack is empty, the top index will be negative 1. From here, we can begin pushing items on the stack. If I push a value of 7, it will go into the first available unoccupied index in the array. Note that we also increment the value of top index so that it becomes 0, indicating that index 0 contains the element which is on top of the stack, which is shown visually here. If I push again, I would get this result. The newly pushed value of 3 occupies index 1 and is identified as the top index by this variable, and we can see here that the 3 is on top of the 7. I'm now going to fast forward and push on several more values. Now the values 5, 0, and 2 have been pushed onto the stack, and that leads the top index to be 4, and the underlying array to look like this. Our abstract stack representation would be like this here. If we were to peek at the stack contents at this point, we would simply look up the value in the array at the index indicated by top index. Because top index is currently 4, a call to peak at this point would return a value of 2. Calling pop at this point would also return a value of 2, but in addition to returning the value that was on top of the stack, we also need to modify the stack to remove 2 from the data structure. This involves setting the former top index to be null again, decrementing the top index value so that in our abstract representation, we no longer have that value on our stack. Additional pops and peaks would lead to the following results. Calling pop again would return zero and leave our top index at two would remove the zero from the array, leaving our abstract representation looking like this. And a call to peak at this point would return five, which is at index two in that array, but would not otherwise change the data structure. Now, if enough push operations occur, it is possible for every index in the array to be occupied by a value in the stack. Now, the top index, 9, is the value of the final index in the array. So the question is, what would happen if I were to push another value onto the stack at this point? Well, arrays have a fixed size. When they are initialized, you allocate memory for them, and you cannot change the size during execution. But we still want to allow a user to push additional items on the stack. This means that we have to create a brand new array with a larger size. And we will decide to make this new array have twice the capacity of the former one 
in anticipation of potentially more push operations coming down the line. So if I want to push the value zero on this stack whose underlying array is at full capacity, I would first make this new array of double the capacity. And the next thing that needs to happen is I have to copy over all of these values one by one into their corresponding index in this newly created array. Having copied over the values, I can now reassign this internal stack variable uh, for the array to point to this new larger array and then carry out the push operation as normal. I'll push the value zero at this index here. The top index increases to 10 and conceptually the zero is located at that point on my stack. Now I should also point out that all of these remaining indices in the array are null references because they are empty, but they are potential future slots for more elements down the line. In Java, this previous array will simply be reclaimed by garbage collection, though in some other languages you would have to explicitly deallocate that array in order to allow this new one to replace it. Having discussed the principles of how the array stack functions, I will now briefly cover the code, focusing on what I think are the most relevant portions of it. We have two constructors. One accepts an initial capacity as input. So this is the user indicating what they want the size of that initial array to be. Now we have a method here that makes sure that size is appropriate. And when we initialize it, we're going to initialize it as a generic object, but then cast it to T, which is a type variable for the stack. And we initialize top index to negative one as was seen earlier. The main operations we care about are push, pop, and peak. The push operation takes a value to be put onto the stack. All of the public methods of this stack have this check initialize method, which is verifying integrity and an appropriate initialization of the stack data structure. That's not relevant to the array stack in particular, but is something relevant to proper data structure creation. Now, the core of the push method is this line, which takes stack, which is our array. It increases the top index by one before then setting the value of that index to be the new entry. So this plus plus top index is a pre-increment, meaning top index is incremented before that resulting value is used in the brackets here to determine where new entry goes. But notice that before that line of code, we have this resize array operation. And that is defined up here. And so this is responsible for doubling the underlying array capacity. It checks to see if the top index is at the end of the array. And if so, it settles on a new size, which is twice as large as what we had before it verifies that that size is acceptable. And then it uses a built-in Java method that is very convenient, arrays.copy of. What this does is it makes a new stack with this given size, but will copy over the elements from the one array to the other. So that operation is made very simple by the existence of that method, but you could also implement it yourself using a straightforward loop. The other stack operations are pop and peak and they both verify correct initialization. They also check to make sure the stack is not empty. So if top index is equal to negative one, it means there are no elements to pop or to peak at. So in these cases, we'll throw an empty stack exception. Otherwise, things will run smoothly. The value at top index is what we're looking for. Notice that the peak operation down here is simpler. We simply return stack top index. But if we're popping, we're going to first retrieve that value, save it in this temporary variable result, because we then have to both decrement the value of top index and set what used to be the top to null. And notice that here, 
the minus minus occurs on the right side of top index. This is a post decrement in contrast to the pre increment we see here. So in this case, the push, we incremented top index before looking up the value for this reference into the stack array. In contrast, this code uses the value of top index to figure out which index is assigned to null. And then after assigning that value to null, we will decrement top index. So this line of code sets to null the initial value of top index and then decrements it afterward. And then we return the result. Some other useful methods inside of this class that were not discussed earlier as being core operations are is empty. This simply checks to see if the stack is empty, which you can tell if the top index is negative one. We also have a clear method, which will remove all elements from the stack. And a simple but not necessarily efficient way to do that is to loop as long as the stack is not empty and pop the elements off. So it would be slightly more efficient to have a for loop that goes through all the elements, setting them to null, and then we simply set the top index back to negative one. This will effectively do that, and it's roughly as efficient, but not as efficient as the alternative. And that is our discussion of the array stack.